morning. Oh, a little Kanye to start the day. Yeah, it's good morning, but it ain't morning, but we're still here, ready to rock and roll this thing. I'm excited to do round two with Luis. Here we go, building a family brand. Let's do this thing. Shut up and sit down. The Business Bros Podcast was created for you. Learn from the business professionals who come to share their stories. Find out what's working in business and social media, what's hot and what's not, straight from the mouths of successful entrepreneurs out there doing the real work. And now, welcome to another episode of Business, business Bros. Bros. Boom! <laughs> it is that it. time, my brother. Hit it. Yeah. Do it, dang. All right, all you business pros out there, before we jump into the show, just a quick reminder, please subscribe on whichever platform it is that you're listening to us on today. Give us a like, give us a follow, subscribe, and drop a review. Help other like-minded business owners find value from our awesome guests while we rise up to those podcast rankings. We'll sincerely appreciate every single one of you for it. And if you want to be a guest on the show, we'd love to have you on to learn from you as well. Go to www.businessbros.biz, schedule your time, and don't forget to follow us on all our social medias at Business Bros Pod. All right, everybody, we're so excited and honored to bring yet another incredible guest to the Business Bros Pod. Today's guest is no stranger to the pod, and we're excited to have him back. Our guest today learned from one of the best in town and has been involved with real estate nearly his entire life. His exceptional knowledge and expertise of the real estate market, combined with a magical marketing strategy, promises to create a lasting, memorable experience when buying or selling your home. Our guest loves what he does, and he never fails to delight his clients with impeccable attention to detail and consistent follow-through. Whether you're looking for your dream home or you need to find a quick solution and sell your home fast, you can trust that our guest has the knowledge, creativity, education, and commitment to make the transaction as smooth as possible. Tune in to hear what our guest is up to now and how he can help you with all of your real estate needs. Joining us today from right here in sunny San Diego, the real estate advisor for the next generation, welcome to the show, Luis Perasa. Boom! All right, all right. Before we even get into the show, ladies and gents, it is 800. And Luis said something Congratulations. before the show started, dude. Thank you, thank you. Luis said something real interesting before the show started. Luis, how many episodes be- before the la- between now and the last time you were on the show? So the last time I was on, I was on 619. So it's been oh. 180 since then, which is crazy. 180 yeah. episodes. That's because we do the damn thing every single day, ladies and gents. That's how we roll. Because you're Luis, crazy, dude. that's why. You do it. <laughs> yes, you're doing something that uh, James and I are essentially doing as well. You are building a family brand. So, uh, you know, we're, talk to me a little bit about what that's like. What's it like? Like, it's your last name, right? It's your name, and yet it's more than that now. Yeah, yeah. It's um, well, it's been 18 months since I jumped into this. Almost 19 months. And it's been quite it's been quite a whirlwind of of collaboration and of brand building and of reshaping, I think, the previous 18 years that this brand started with. And so it's been it, I've been fortunate to take 18 years of experience and 18 years of of you know relationship building and kind of formed it into something that's gonna be here for a lot longer than another 18 years. Damn right. Mama's not going to let you run away from this thing. You, she, she built it up for a I while. Now she's like, I got to pass it on to the next generation. has got to do the thing. Yeah. All right, well, let me ask you something. Uh, I mean, you've, you've been on the show before. Why, why, why schedule another episode? What, what's the, what's the thought process behind that? I think, you know, it, it's something that I've always liked doing is this interview style. And, and you guys are obviously some of the only people in San Diego that, that are public and promote, I think, the podcast that you guys do. And I mean, 1800 episodes later, you guys have a good following. So why not, why not jump back on and and check in with you guys after, I think it's been like nine or nine months since I was last on here. All right. All right. A little, uh, uh, what's his name again? I forgot his name off the top of my head. And I really like his movie, James Greenlights, uh, Matthew McConaughey. There you go. All right. All right. (laughs) 
<laughs> thanks, dude. Thanks, dude. Uh, all right. Um, so, Luis, you guys are, are, I mean, your mom's been crushing it for years now. You've been doing it for 18 months. What are you guys currently doing to get new customers? Like, how, what, what's that process like? Yeah, I think so. The last time we chatted, it was it was all about fixing our systems. It was all about getting our processes in order. And now that we've perfected and I think at least gotten more efficient with with processes and systems, I think now it's just putting the nose to the grindstone and and just actively finding clients and actively meeting with people and building relationships and going out to lunch with friends and and everything in between because now we've got an efficient system right whether it's a new new buyer or a new seller you know it's it's all of that stuff is kind of automated for lack of a better term now and so it's allowed us to grow and it's allowed us to help more people um, now than we ever have so so your your intake right so when you bring on a new seller when you bring on a new buyer that process you know exactly to the to like the checklist you know what's going to happen next you know what's going to go on next you're doing the fun stuff of a realtor dude because let's be honest the the relationship building that's the funnest part of being a realtor you get to go out and have lunch with people but you're doing something a little bit different that i hadn't seen before you went out and hired somebody. Shout out to uh, Fugati here because I recognize some of that skill stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, and started boosting what you were doing on social media. Tell me what that experience is like. What was it like working with Adrian, first of all? And then, you know, what, how, what, what has it done to your social media, your branding, your marketing? Yeah, so I, I've known Adrian since before, before I jumped into real estate. Obviously, he'd been working with my mom previous to me joining the team. But going into a new marketing era where video is is the most important thing and, and content creation is the most important thing to get your name and brand and, and build up social proof, like we like to call it, that has really triggered in our mind that that's the best investment we could make for the long term. Um, so having a videographer that's super reliable and having a videographer that's there and, and that's willing to collaborate with you on different different marketing videos and different collaborations with creativity and things like that. It's, it's super fun and it's really special. And I think it's something that's undervalued and there's very few people that do it. There's very few people that do it across the country, let alone in San Diego. And so we've seen just in the last three to four months, um, our, our clients that are coming to us are now coming through social media. Whereas before it was 95% referrals, we're still getting those referrals, but now we're shifting to more of an 80-20 where we have people and strangers from Instagram, from Facebook that have been following us for a while now that are finally like, okay, I'm ready to buy or sell. And I trust you guys. So it's been pretty cool to see that finally come to fruition. How helpful is it? Uh, you know, there, there are other videographers and people who handle the camera. But working with somebody who helps direct you and gives you like, you know, constructive criticism, right? You come in with yeah. an idea of what you want done. Uh, yeah. And then the videographer sits back and he's like, all right, that, in order to get this done, let's move you here. Let's put you here. Let's do this. Talk to the camera like this. Like there's a lot of direction that goes into it. It's not just point and shoot, right? I I agree. I mean, there's definitely people who have better camera skills and better interview skills and things like that. But there's something about getting in front of the camera that even the best have trouble with. And so to have a director and have a videographer like Adrian or, or whoever it might be with any other realtor, it just comes down to trust and it comes down to being on the same page and really feeling like they want the best for you. Because if I'm going to grow, Adrian's going to grow. And if Adrian grows, you know, we want to help other realtors in San Diego grow as well. And, and that's, that's, I think, the, the second part of this business that I've really enjoyed recently is the relationship building and, and the community of realtors that's also built here. I think he's wonderful. Yeah, totally. Totally. All right, what, what, what are some things like, you know, your mom's been in the business for many years. She's, she's trained you. She's helped you build, start to build a, a team around you. What are some different things that you guys have tried to get customers in the past? And uh, like, how many of those have you kept around and how many of them have you like kind of dumped? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, every six months or so, we, we, we come back to the marketing plan and we come back to a larger, a larger goal, which is obviously to help more families. Um, last year, that goal was 30 families this year, it's 50 next year, it's going to be a hundred. But with that comes 
the strategy, like you said, the marketing strategy, what have we kept? What have we gone away with? You know, it can change all day long, but at the end of the day, it comes down to your sphere. It comes down to the people that you know, it comes down to the people you went to school with, it comes down to past clients. Because if you build those relationships, they're gonna refer you to your friends and family. So it's it's something that when we have our buyer consultations or our, or our seller listing consultations, that's the first thing we say is, you know, if we do a good job for you, you're gonna refer us to your friends and family. And if we don't do a good job for you and you didn't feel like you had a good experience, you're also gonna tell your friends and family. So it's it's one of those things where you know we've we've added print marketing, we've taken print marketing out, we've we've boosted videos on Instagram and Facebook. That's all more for brand recognition, and that's all more for expanding the name and expanding the reach in terms of familiarity. But when it comes down to it, people are hiring you because they know you and trust you, not necessarily because they recognize your name. Mm, that's so true. But you're talking. Yeah scalability here too right so you know going from you know from 10 deals a year to 20 deals a year to 30 is you know that's that's doable year over year going from 50 to 100 that's a whole different type of strategy what what of the of, yeah. of all the marketing things you've done which one have been the most successful to grow that sphere to actually have that sphere remember you because i mean you know the the time frame for a for a house or the lifetime of a mortgage is about seven years right so between mm -hmm. when they buy to the next seven years remembering the realtor's contact yeah. information or remembering who you did business with, that's kind of tough. So what are you guys doing to stay in front of them? You know, a couple, a couple tangible things are, you know, the video testimonials that you see us do, that's something at the end of a transaction that's such a good keepsake and it's such a good memory for, for our clients to have and to share with, with other friends and family members. I mean, other things we do are like Popeye's, you know, whether that's a Labor Day Popeye or a Christmas bottle of champagne or things like that throughout the year that just shows people that you're still thinking about them, right? That you still care. And so in turn, you know, we want to be your resource if you're looking to buy, if you're looking to sell, if you're looking to renovate floors, you know, everything in between, we want to be your resource forever. Um, is it hard? Absolutely. I mean, people, people, probably have five friends or family members that are realtors and and what stands out with with us especially with like returning clients is is how you make them feel on on that last day when you hand over keys or or when you help them finish selling their home because they're relocating that last hour with them that's what they're going to remember i mean stuff could have hit the fan the previous 30 days but if they felt like you cared in that last you know hour to 30 minutes that's that's really the whole the whole memory they're going to have of the of the transaction, dude. That is so right. I mean, uh, emotion is huge, right? And then you yeah. see this all the time. I mean, some of the some of the great realtors that are out there creating some of these emotional things and then capturing it on video has been mm -hmm. one of the, the the greatest things because you could always recap that, right? Like you can like one of the things that I love to see is is you record a video testimony of the day that they close, you have a celebration, champagne, balloons, whatever it is, doing a nice little key ceremony, right? And all that's videotaped and it's great because you get to post it on your social media and that's awesome. But right. using that as an anniversary tool, right? So put that yep. in your CRM and say, look, send out this link on yep. you know this day, a year later. Like that's the type of stuff that really you know, sets you apart from everybody else. It's the little yeah. things like that. And and this, these are the systems that you're talking about. When you're talking about onboarding people, it goes from not just bringing them on, but what happens after the close and after the sale yeah. and how you're going to contact them, right? Tell me a little yeah. bit about your system that you got in place. So, you know, something that we've refined is, is that after the fact, right? It's okay, you close a deal. Now what? What do you do? to stay from top of mind. And, and it's something like you said, something as simple as sending a handwritten note, right? A, a one year anniversary, a five year anniversary, a, a text of, hey, how's it going? You know, I saw you remodeled your kitchen, you know, how, how are things coming along? It's just, it's just being human. And it's, and it's caring enough to just send a text, send a note, um, reply on someone's Instagram story, reply on someone's Facebook post, like things like that, that that people remember in the long term. And it's it's all about how you make people feel, like you mentioned. But we're human. I mean, you said the same thing. You got to act human. But we are human. And I know, yeah. I mean, and even if you do 10 transactions in a year, 12 transactions in a year, one a month, even at that number, 
you are going to forget people's birthdays. You are going to forget oh, yeah. to check in the stuff. So the, the stuff that you're talking about, you have it also set in your CRM to remind you, right? I mean, it, it's not all dependent on your memory to reach out and talk to them. You have it set right. in place so that you can talk to them at any given time, right? Yeah. So for, for the transactions that have happened in the past year, yes, we do, because we've set that kind of on our checklist, like you mentioned. But anything before that, it's tough to go back and fix it because it's a lot of data. I mean, we've got we've got fourteen hundred contacts in our in our CRM, and it's hard to fix fourteen hundred contacts before, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's it's more so one of those things where we're trying slowly to reach back and to to try to capture as much data as we can from the past eighteen years. But more than anything, it's okay. Let's start right now and let's build out outward and and more so have everything fixed for the future because if not you're going to drive yourself crazy i mean it's hard to fix a crm i think that's the uh i think everyone can agree with that especially as realtors oh dude that's for sure the bottom line is data (laughs) entry man sitting behind a computer is not really a realtor's thing it's i love that you have it as a checklist but it's not really our 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 main thing what's your what's your annual revenue goal for 2023 is coming i'm sorry 2022 is coming right around the corner i mean i know it's it's September, right? So I, I get that we're we're entering here uh, close to the fourth quarter. But as a realtor, a lot of people take time off. Usually the year ends at around Halloween for whatever yeah. reason. For a lot of yeah. realtors, it ends right around Halloween. So what do, what are you uh, what are you looking at as the year ends here in this ridiculously hot market uh, and yeah. going into twenty twenty two? Yeah, so funny enough, we we're actually our busiest during quarter four, and I think it's because on our team we talk about the end of our fiscal year, so to speak, is is July one or June thirtieth. So our new year starts July first, and so now we're prepping July first for the for the new year of January first. So you know, our to go back to your question about our goal, our goal is to hit a hundred transactions in in twenty twenty two. Um, Volume will probably be around 65 million, give or take, depending on, you know, big volume deals or small volume deals. Um, and that's that's going to be double what we're doing this year. Why that number? Why did you guys come up with that? You know, it's, it's and I, I wonder that only because, you know, everybody has these arbitrary numbers. I know James and I, like our goal since we were like 20 or 25 or something like that, it was we're going to make $30,000 a, a month each from our, from our passive investments, right? That was, that was the goal. And if you ask me what, where that number came from, I couldn't really tell you. We kind of (laughs) just pulled it out of thin air somewhere. Uh, James did a whole activity on trying to spend $30,000 a month and it was damn near impossible (laughs) after like two months. Uh, But you know, that, uh, that's the truth of ours. It it came, it's an arbitrary number. How did you guys come up with a hundred? Why that goal? So our arbitrary number for 2021 was 50. Um, it was a stretch goal for us. I think it's one of those things where if you set a goal and, and you have that number and you have that goal in your mind day after day after day, it manifests itself. And, and it really, it's crazy the power of, of your mind and the power of setting a goal and, and reaching it. Um, and so in, in 2021, our, our goal is 50 and, and we're going to blow that out of the water, it seems like, if fingers crossed, if everything goes well the last quarter. But you know, 2022, we think we're finally more than anything, we're ready for it. We're ready for a hundred transactions. Things that we tell our team members is if you get six listing appointments today and you have to, and you have to go meet all those six listing appointments next week, are you even ready for that volume? And Mm -hmm. so if you're not ready for it, then you're not going to be able to grow to whatever that arbitrary number is. So now that we have our systems in place, now that we have you know, for lack of a better phrase, our shit in order. I think now it's time to really just go get, go help more people and go and go take on as many clients as possible, which which we always do. But now we have the capability to do so. And what about for Luis himself? Like, you know, you've, you've come a long way in the last 18 months. I mean, you can imagine what another year will do for you. 
So like if I could ask you, you know, what what does what what are people saying about you in 2023? Let's say you go through the whole 2022. It's all over. You take a look at your your numbers, you reach your quota, you've hit that 100 marker that you were looking at. What are people saying about you? What are people say what are, what are your clients saying about you? What have you become at that point? Oh god, I I hate questions like this. Um I I think it's just that I gave them a good experience, like that I gave my clients a good experience that, that I felt that they felt like they were the only client, because I know that's something that it's hard to balance, right? You want to help all these families, but now you're passing them on to maybe a, a contract to close team member, or you're passing them on to another part of your team where now they don't feel like they're part of your team. Like now the client doesn't feel like they're part of your experience. So it, it takes a lot of mental power to be able to delegate certain tasks without losing the integrity of that, of that experience with the client. Um, so that's one thing I think it's one thing is client facing. And I think one thing is making sure the client is first and making sure they feel like they're the only person in terms of in the, you know, realtor world in the real estate industry, I think, you know, it's easy to compare yourself to other other agents because I know I do and I I hold myself to a pretty high standard and and I want to be, you know, on that Mount Rushmore of of realtors in San Diego. But at the end of the day, it's it's helping clients, it's making sure people are taken care of and the rest comes. I mean, accolades and recognitions and awards and stuff that comes. I think it's just being humble more than anything and helping your clients at the end of the day. What uh, what part of your business do you think you're you're struggling with more that you that you want to work on? I'll give you an example. I know for me, public speaking and marketing, it was one of the weak points in my you know 16, 17 years of being in business, which is why we started the podcast, right? Because I wanted mm-hmm. to make sure that I could get in front of people, speak uh, you know in a way that actually made sense, and I had the confidence to do that sort of stuff. You know, three years down down the road, three and a half years down the road, it's it's dramatically changed marketing skills, branding skills, all those things that I that I knew that I was weak in. I made an effort to work on every single day to to get better in your business or or you as a realtor. What are the, some things that you think you want that you're struggling with that you know you want to work on in the next coming year? Oh man, I think we can always fix our systems. We can always be more efficient. I mean, the CRM that we have now is probably at like 25% capacity of, of what it should be. Um, and it's one of those things where I know that if we get to that, and if I get to that 100% capacity, I mean, sky's the limit. It's, it's crazy how much power a CRM has and how much systems have in a business and in, in scalability. So it's just it's just refining the business. It, it's not even working with clients. It's not even reaching out to friends. It's none of that. I think it's just refining the system and refining the process so that people feel like you're on top of it. Mm. What about building the team? So like, you know, you're you're still young, right? And when you yeah. bring on you you go out there in the real estate market and yeah, you got agents of all kinds of ages, but there's some that are that are a little bit older. They're going to come around with, you know, old dog and their old tricks doing their things the way yeah. they're supposed to. When it comes to, you know, leading and managing a team, how do you feel your your strengths and weaknesses are with that? I think I have a really good grasp of of the emotional intelligence side of managing people. I've I've always been good at understanding situations and understanding when to push and when to and when to kind of ease off the gas um i attribute that to my sports career you know i was a captain in soccer for a long time and and so having those interactions with you know your peers and your interactions with different friends and things like that i think that's really helped me um training old agents is very tough. It, it's a challenge. And it's one of those things where you have to know what they can change and what they're not going to budge on, on w- what you're asking them to change. And so it, at the end of the day, it's, it's in their, it's in their court, right? You have to find out what is their why. I think my biggest job and my mom's biggest job as team leaders is finding out what makes our agents tick and using that to, to have them help more families. And I think one of the ways that we teach them and tell them is 
you know, they're all great agents. They all know what they're doing. They all know how to value a home. They all know how to treat clients well. And more than anything, it's you you can't be selfish and not help more clients. Like people mm-hmm. need us. People don't know anything about real estate sometimes. People don't know anything when they're first time buyers. People don't know anything when maybe a family member passes away and they have to sell, you know, an estate and things like that. And so it, how selfish of us to have all this knowledge and have all this, all these tools and not help as many people as possible. All right. Question. Cause I mean, I go live every single day, right? I make sure that I have an Instagram story pretty much every day. Uh, and yet I still don't think like I'm, I still feel like I'm not doing enough. Like I, I should be making more stories. I should be making more posts. I should be a little more human. Well, how, how do you feel you are with social media? I, I've seen you guys post a lot more stuff. And I know there's always room for improvement. How do you feel that you are where where you are today and where do you want it to be? Yeah, great question. It's funny, my mom and I just had this conversation a couple days ago and it was it was that moment where we where we kind of realized that social media was working as a lead generation for us at that point after, you know, 12, 18 months of being consistent. Um, we look back and we've come a long way. And then you kind of stop and pause and you look at what other people are doing. And I like to think we're we're up there in terms of the valuable content we're putting, the, you know, the fact that we're on there every day, the fact that we're being truthful and honest and, and giving our opinion on the market and things like that. I think it's easy to be super hard on yourself. And I'm sure, you know, you and James do this as well. And it's it's easy to be critical and say, I'm this isn't good enough. And I'm not good enough, but it's good to give yourself credit at the end of the day because it it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of hours to to dedicate to social media or any any part of a business to have it finally work for you. Oh, dude, it sure does. And you're right. I, I love how you said that, though. You're seeing results after 12 to 16 months of being consistent. Dude. Yeah. I, it's yeah. so ridiculous. Um, you know. I've I've uh, I've been lucky this this year. I don't really advertise and talk about real estate as much as I used to when we first started the podcast. But mm-hmm. this year, listing and then another listing and then another mm-hmm. listing and then another listing. And I think it's the same reason. It's because of the consistency of just showing up all the time, right? Just yeah. being out there. Um, one of my favorite parts about it is now. My, uh, my, the biggest thing I use when I'm talking to a client and I know I'm competing with other agents, I just tell them, I'm like, look, I don't know who the other agent is, but do me a favor, Google their name and then Google my name and see the results. Like if you want to, somebody right. who's going to market your property, look at that real quick. And, and like, hands down, almost every time I've used that line, they're yeah. like, whoa, this is you. Okay. Yeah. Definitely want to work with you versus the other guy. He like, maybe a Facebook page pops up. What has been yeah. your results, you know, 18, 16 months of just constant creating content when you Google yourself, what's it look like now compared to then? Yeah, it, it's now it's Luis Peraza realtor, right? Now I'm, now I'm a realtor in San Diego, not just, I don't know, maybe a high school soccer article that was published in, in 2014. <laughs> so that's, it's funny that that's a good way to, to kind of check yourself, right? And see, okay, what am I doing? How am I doing it right? And, you know, there's so many more things that we could do. We're, you know, we can do the Facebook, we can do the Instagram, we can get into YouTube, which, which we try to do, but obviously it's hard to build traction on there. We can do the podcast and it's at the end of the day, picking what works for you and what you can consistently do day in and day out. Because if not, you're going to try this for three months and then you're going to think it doesn't work. And then you're going to try this for three months and you're going to think it doesn't work. And then you're never going to get anywhere. With, with any sort of platform. And, and it's crazy because social media right now is, is, is free, basically. I mean, it, it's free in the sense that you're not paying and you're giving your data away, but, but you know, it's, it's our new website, essentially. Instagram itself is our new website. And it's funny because when we meet new clients or we'll get phone calls from a referral and things like that, you know, we send them a group chat, we send them a text, and part of that text is a link to our Instagram. It's not even a link to our website anymore, which is which is pretty cool to think, in, in my opinion. It's your resume, bro. Like, and this is this is what I tell my students all the time. I'm like, look, you need to be creating content because, like you said, you're Luis Peraza, realtor. 
Like you made that guy. You created him. He used to be the right. athlete that had a high school article, but now he's the realtor. And that is something that took effort. It took time. It took consistency, yeah. but you made it. You could have made yourself into anything else, right? You could mm -hmm. have created whatever, you know, monster, icon, influencer, whatever you wanted to create. Ain't no thing like me except me. Rocket, right? You could have created any of it, but you created yeah. this. And and this yeah. that, that's the power that I keep telling people all the time today. I'm like, look, whatever it is that you want to be, stop waiting for it to happen and start making it happen with one post at a time, one video at a time, one clip at a time, one show at a time. You are creating who you want to be. That's the power of the digital resume. That's why you send them the Instagram link or, or you know, yeah. that's why they Google your name because that's what you've created. That's where your power lies. I don't even need a business card anymore. I, I only carry those when right. I do like a, a showing at a house or something so I can leave it on the counter. Other than yeah. that, I don't yeah. hand them out because it's all about that Instagram. All right, Luis, right. before we head out, man, uh, thanks for, for coming on episode 800. I love how you came on 619, which is an important number for us because that's where we're yeah. at in San Diego. <laughs> and now exactly. episode 800. But before we bounce, um, you know, if people want to work with you, reach out to you, how can they get a hold of you? I'm gonna refer you to my Instagram. You see it there on the bottom of the screen, um, at Luis Peraza Realtor. There's a hyperlink in there. We've got links to different YouTube videos for listings. We've got links to my LinkedIn, to my Facebook. Uh, everything you can imagine is, is on my Instagram. Feel free to message me on there and, and find my contact info on there as well. Yeah, I checked it out. Even the Business Bros episode 619 is on there. That's dope too, so that yep. was awesome. Yep. All right, dude. Uh, two more questions. Number one, what was your experience like on the Business Bros podcast? And then who should be listening to the show? Yeah, um, I loved it. I mean, you guys are awesome. It, it's a good 30 minute, 30 minute conversation with someone who's, you know, well, well liked in, in the San Diego community and across the country. And so I appreciate you, you having me on. Thank you. All right, ladies and gents, that's it right there. Look, real estate is a hot market. You need to work with realtors who are out there doing the damn thing. And Luis and his family have been doing it for many, many years. So check out their stuff. Peraza, uh, yes, PerazaRealEstate.com or Luis Peraza Realtor on Instagram. Take a look, take a follow. If you're interested in buying a home, selling a home, might as well stop there first. Get a, an opinion. Look them up. Do a Google search. See what they're all about. That's what it's that's what it's all about. All right, ladies and gents, thank you for being with us. 800 episodes. That is no small feat every single day, but we are going to be taking a break here. I'm flying out to Hawaii on Thursday. I, I, I came out negative. I had to go take a COVID test, and uh, <laughs> it was weird. They gave me this, like, little vial. I had to, like, spit it into a like, little black line, but it don't matter. They said I'm good, so we're going to be flying out to Hawaii on Thursday. We'll be back on Wednesday uh, to continue on with the Business Bros Podcast. Luis, thank you very much for coming on the show. Appreciate you taking the time. And, uh, you, of course, we I forgot, man. We got to keep playing your... Uh, or is it a little bit of Kanye as we edge out? Good morning, ladies and gents. We'll see you guys next time. Peace, y'all. And we're out. Thank you for listening to the Business Bros Podcast. Are you looking to get more clients or to increase your income? Hernan, the business bro, can help you generate referrals through the power of podcasting. And James, the insurance bro with Pipeline Insurance, can help you effectively add insurance to your existing business. If you are ready to create wealth today and generational wealth for tomorrow, email businessbros at csfirst.com to schedule a free consultation or join the Business Bros Network, www.businessbros.biz.